Intimate Confession is a project, is an exhibition that looks at these two um, kind of contrasts, both intimacy and infrastructure through the lens of transmission, intergenerational life, and cultural inheritance. I'd say that cultural inheritance is like the cusp here, or the, the crux of meaning. Um, and then the kind of more, the mechanisms to arrive to cultural inheritance could be transmission and intergenerational life. So through the works of these 11 artists, we have um, contrasts of material use and personal history, uh, family ties, kinship, and those uh, generate different forms of meaning through how they kind of erupt and you know, they're becoming into the, into the world. So in 2021, I was asked to come to Texas as a visiting curator uh, to return to basically my homeland. I'm from Texas, I'm from Houston. I was invited to, to uh, be a visiting curator in residence at Art Pace in San Antonio. And there I began visiting artists across the state as well as uh, theorists, cultural practitioners, activists, different kind of academics. And I started witnessing a, a, a rapid amount of change. It was also in the moment during, of COVID, which was of a lot of infrastructural shifts and changes and, and, and ruptures. And um, I saw a lot of what also was statewide change, such as new businesses moving here, different, for, different, different, um, different population, different demographic groups that were never here in Texas before. And that became really interesting for me as um, a subject to explore or to research further. Later, I was invited to curate an exhibition at ArtPace, um, and that's when this project sort of was imagined uh, as a genesis project uh, to that, with that exhibition. That exhibition was called Carbonate of Copper, and it was named after the poem that was also written during COVID by UH professor Roberto Tejada. Uh, that is a body of poetry that consists of various different poems that consider vibrant matter, different materialities, etc. And so that exhibition included some of the artists that we see here, but also other artists. It was my intention that I would expand this project and in in, in see it evolve into something else, something larger and more dynamic. And that's when we began um, discussing with the Blaffer this potential collaboration. So the project originated from an, this exhibition, Carbonate of Copper, that was held in San Antonio. And Intimate Confession as a Project is a kind of a culmination, I'd say, of all of, all of these issues I've been thinking through and uh, comes through the work of these 11 international artists. So you will see that in their various works, how they engage with the city of Houston, but also how they relate to the themes into, uh, in, in a larger context. So I am from Houston, Texas. I have not lived here in 25 years. So this exhibition is a form of a homecoming. Uh, and I was really interested to engage in very important issues related to Houston, the city of Houston, as well as introduce those ideas to, to the group of artists that you see here. So those, those various ideas include waterways, climate-induced events, uh, infrastructural change in Houston at large. Intimate Confession as a Project is, is a, comes from a sonnet line by Juliana Spar. In this poem, uh, Juliana is discussing blood or blood as an infrastructure. I was really interested in the materiality of blood, but transferring that into a confessional space. So I used the notion of confession here as a narrative uh, kind of device or mechanism in the work of these artists. So the, the artists do, they're from, they span generations and they span geographies. They're all artists that I have some kind of relationship with or I have been, have a developing relationship with over the last year or two years. Um, they, some are even dead artists. One is my great grandmother, for example. Uh, who was an amateur singer-songwriter. And then we have other artists such as uh, Lonnie Holly, who is a 70-year-old performer and very um, influential artist uh, here in the United States. The complexity of bringing them together, it, 
there's different artists have different needs and different different kind of I wouldn't say demands but sort of um, conditions right and so I think that there is a conversational space there that I, that I that I give and 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 welcome uh, and there's nothing more than important than being an advocate for your artist. So being able to work with the artist and see that their goal is achieved is, is very important for me. Um, there's a commissioned work by the artist Kate Newby, and that was one of the three artists that we, that we worked really closely with uh, across the year. Artists were brought here to the University of Houston and Houston to visit the, the, the city and, and the university so, and think through various different issues that I was exploring in this exhibition. So Kate Newby has made a work which are in the loading dock area, or, uh, which is a series of drains. Um, that's the first, I'd say, first piece that you ex will experience by Kate. They are drains made in cast iron, and uh, they have a very beautiful patina, patinaing uh, process, which is a weathering process of the material of cast iron. The second work by Kate is, is you will meet in the uh, hallway, which you pass uh, as you kind of approach the upper galleries. So as you make your way up, you experience um, work also by Chifon Thomas. These are a series, it's a 25 uh, part installation of uh, Bible houses, which are made from salvaged uh, Bibles and the skins of these Bibles have been removed and stitched together. Later, you make your way up further. Uh, you can, you can you can engage with those houses from below and from above. As you make your way up further, you experience the work of Benvenuto Chavajay. Uh, Benvenuto is a, an artist from Guatemala, uh, from San Pedro Laguna community, Solola, uh, who is an important figure inside of uh, a Mayan descendant artist, an uh, important figure within his community. And this work uh, is a work that is um, made on stretch canvas. It's a photographic work of a ritual that that Benvenuto uh, has made. Um, uh, there's an interesting sort of transformative aspect he's looking at in this work. Uh, the plant actually inflicted a burn on, on the artist's skin and there was a healing process that took over, uh, that took some two weeks uh, after this third degree burn. Um, and since then, the artist has incorporated what he calls uh, uh, healing art into his practice. So this is the aspect of what I'm talking about by intergenerational life. The, this rue plant was utilized by his mother uh, through uh, different forms of healing forms. And at the time his mother had, had just passed away. So also the aspects of intergenerational life uh, occur through the work of Namira. Um, there's a strong emphasis on inheritance there. Uh, I'd say also the work of Josie Ann Teets, my great grandmother. Um, also we see that in the work of Lonnie Holly. Um, I'd say both works by Lonnie Holly explore that. And Hector Garcia. And also Anna Mayer to some extent, because that work uh, looks at her relationship with her mother. So these are, I'd say, more personal relationships to the concept of intergener intergenerational life. But also we're exploring that through more institutional forms, such as the work of Iris Tuliatu. That's also kind of intergenerational, explores different histories and different past lives of objects. So. We're looking at intergenerational life, not only from human forms, but also non-human forms. So there are many site-specific works that you will encounter here. One example is the work by Gwyneth uh, Bolens, an artist from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, that work had, had been uh, made specifically inside of its, its origin point in, um, in an industrial yarn factory in the, in, the, in the middle south of France. It consists of several rollers and pulleys that are anchored throughout the, the hallways of, of the blaffer. And 
stretched across them are copper wires and reflective yarn. These, these yarns are woven between the pulleys and rollers and connect the various galleries of the blaffer. Other pieces that have been um, sort of modified or reintroduced or are, are, are site specific for this, this exhibition are Chief on Thomas's uh, 25 part uh, installation of Bible houses. Those works had originally shown in New York, but this is the first opportunity to really um, bring together this robust installation. Uh, some of these works were borrowed from the Rennie collection in Vancouver and other uh, Bible houses come from different other locations. So this is the first opportunity in an institutional context to bring these works together. So Clémence de la Tour du Bain is a French artist. It's also one of the commissioned artists. Uh, Clémence made a visit here in April of last year and visited ver the various archives at the special collections at the University of Houston. Those those archives include the oil and gas reserves, which were a really interesting aspect for her to explore. Also, we made visits to uh, the different petrochemical facilities in the uh, in, in near Deer Park. Uh, one of those groups includes the TPC group, and we met with chemists. We discussed different different sort of infrastructural changes um, and through the lens of. Um, of, uh, of smell, or if, if, if smell, such smells exist as they did in the 1970s and 80s here in Houston, or how, um, how those environments have changed. So the work that you see on display is a work that has evolved out of a project called Host that was originally produced at the Contemporary Art Museum in Bordeaux in France. That was a commissioned project but it was always conceived to sort of evolve and expand to other institutions. In that project, a special, specially conceived scent was, was um, developed and worn by different museum workers. In this iteration, we see different sculptures that have been made uh, specifically evoking the original containers that held that scent but these sculptures made of wax and black sealing wax in, in, in particular, uh, host an embedded scent. That scent is inspired through conversations, through uh, different experiences here in Houston. On an additional table, we see uh, a group of photographs mi mixed with some archival material of the artists, personal imagery, and different propaganda materials. Iris Tuliatou is a Greek artist, uh, also who has been commissioned uh, to make a project here, uh, more engaging with the sort of infrastructural life of the museum nestled within the university. Iris was also Im invited here in April of last year, or, or this year, excuse me, uh, to, to look at the, the institution to study the institution's history, its affiliations, its constitution, and how it relates to the University of Houston, its, its funders, its patrons. Uh, she really developed a very forensic study of all the institutional workings of the Blaffer and within the University of Houston. What we will experience or what we're experiencing here at, in the exhibition is uh, two, two works. One is called Office Drag, which consists of a multi-part uh, or three-year calendar system, mainly I'd say during that would, went sort of dormant within the COVID years. That calendar system previously occupied the hallway spaces of the back offices or the, uh, of the Blaffer. And those calendars have been transposed to the gallery. The artist looks at these works as sort of like time capsules. They, they, cont they contain time on the calendars themselves. There aren't anything really recognizably visible. Some bare rubbings uh, that looks like they, they pertain to something, looks like they hint to something, but they're almost barely readable or, or, or visible. Also, the artist has in the place of uh, of the hallway space uh, has introduced a, a, a kind of new choreography or a script, uh, which is which is um, uh, consists of 
an, a kind of bonded loan uh, from the Museum of Fine Arts Houston and the Sarah Campbell Blaffer Foundation. When I say bonded, I mean because it relates to the 50th anniversary of the Blaffer. That loan has, uh, was made in tandem with a series of other loans that uh, you will be experiencing at the end of the year here at the Blaffer. Uh, what this loan does is it piggybacks a certain kind of process. And um, what you can experience is, a, is, a, is, a, is an object on view. Uh, it's, a, it's an object called a model of the dog Albicinades. It's a, a dog potentially with Greek origins, but has a really interesting and complex history. This dog, and uh, it, it almost reached the hands of uh, the, the original dog, or the, the almost reached the hands of the Blaffer family. However, the British Museum were the ultimate um, uh, entities who were able to acquire this piece. So, in experiencing this artwork, uh, which is led through through a docent-led um, tour. You will be learning about the history of the object, but also it will reveal more um, intricate stories and uh, tellings of the institution, such as the Blaffer. So this, this particular choreography is experienced through um, a docent-led tour. Docents are the only other persons that can have access to the office spaces through uh, what is this security threshold, which is a key swipe system. Edis was very interested in who has access, who doesn't have access. So by engaging in this tour, you're engaging with someone who does have a certain extended access, and that, and that access is given to these docents across the, 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 the span of the exhibition. Also in the exhibition, Intimate Confessions, the project have worked by Hector Garcia, Hector Garcia made a project which consists of various uh, crocheted copper pieces. Copper is an important element of the exhibition. These were all made on site except for the one work which was integrated within the larger installation. So what you're experiencing are uh, copper, really intricately woven copper pieces, other works too in horsehair or onks. And um, what they sort of chime with is, is Hector's own relationship to his own family, which uh, in his, um, his maternal family's history, which uh, relates to Zacatecas. Mexico. So these are crochet, crocheted forms that he learned from his grandmother. Also in the exhibition, we have work by Anna Mayer, professor of sculpture at the University of Houston. Uh, Anna has made two new works and there's an existing work. One work is called Pale Clay. Uh, it includes, it, it's, a, it's a work, a very intimate, a small scale work of, which is a latch hooked version or of um, a painting that Anna's mother would paint uh, while she was still alive. It's a latch hooked weaving, we could say, uh, which is a Paul Klee painting. What Anna did in this, in this work was took to remaking um, uh, those, those paintings that her mother was making before her, her death. Also, there are two floor sculptures by Anna. Those um, are really interesting works that look at the below and above ground. Um, they integrate what is a form called funeral fringe, which is a um, both gleaned clay and rubber uh, sculpture form that uh, is woven through a photographic support. So in the work, you can experience both fracking zones in Texas and different um, excavation sites within Texas. So the themes that, that Anna is looking at here are different related to environmental themes, environmental humanities, and also sort of a weaving of, of um, history through, through these forms. It was really important for me in the um, in developing this exhibition to have a like an active public program uh, that would go in tandem with the exhibition that includes concerts, 
by uh, participants such as Blackie or Lonnie Holly. It includes symposiums, uh, it includes talks, book launches. Um, so all of these different events you can experience across the six month run of the, of the exhibition. It's a way to connect the exhibition also to the larger community and different communities within Houston. So you can experience say work by Namira at the Blaffer, but you could also experience that work at Basket, uh, Basket Books and Arts, where there is a, an exhibition of, of drawings by, by Na. We also held, for example, a reading of, of uh, bringing together different writers from Houston and from uh, other, other places. Um, in February, we will be also experiencing on campus a, a symposium that really looks at the study of uh, these different ideas of intimacy and infrastructure through the work of various scholars, including uh, UH's own Roberto Tejada. So all of these, the way I see public programming is, is that I find it feeds into a more holistic way of experiencing art and experiencing the exhibition at whole. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nurturing form for sure. What I really hope that the viewers take away is that they're not only experiencing an exhibition, but they're also connecting art to various other fields of, of, of experience and existence. So through the artworks here, you're really reaching towards um, sort of an experience with art, but also larger forms you know, beyond the museum walls.